Hello and welcome to a discussion on how to account for joint cost. After viewing this video, you will be able to define the terms associated with joint cost and allocate these joint costs to individual products. You will be able to record the cost to make products using the joint production process and also record costs associated with byproducts. Let's begin with an explanation of a joint process and the terminology associated with accounting for joint cost. A joint process is the first stage of production that occurs in order to produce a combination of products called joint products. Making the different joint products requires further processing cost. The joint process may produce scrap or products that cannot be sold to normal customers that may be sold to other manufacturers. Waste is disposed of and is generally not sold. An example is a dairy that produces raw milk. The costs incurred to operate the dairy are called joint process costs. The milk must be produced first in order to use the milk to produce other products. The point where the milk is available to sell raw is called the split-off point. The owners of the dairy must make the decision at the split-off point to either sell the milk raw or use the milk and incur further processing cost that will convert the milk into different products which are called joint products. Joint process costs have to be incurred first before the rest of the further processing costs can be incurred to make the different products. Further processing costs are specific to each product. Joint costs must be allocated to each individual product because it is impossible to tell how much was incurred for each product. The question that must be answered by the accountant is how much of the joint process cost should be allocated to each product. The allocated joint cost plus the further processing cost is the total cost to produce each product. There are many different methods that companies can use to allocate joint costs to individual products. We will discuss four of the most commonly used methods. The first method is the physical measurement method. The allocation is based on the physical quantity of the joint product used to make individual products. For instance, a company incurred $100,000 to produce 40,000 pounds of a material that is used to make individual products. The average cost is $2.50 per pound. The quantity of pounds that is used to make each product determines the allocation of joint cost. Product 1 uses 10,000 pounds and product 2 uses 30,000 pounds. Each product is allocated $2.50 for each pound. Another way to do the math is to allocate using physical measurement and the percentage of the total. Joint costs are 100,000 and the two products are allocated the joint cost based on the percentage of total pounds used to make each product. The second method is called sales value at split off. The total sales at split off is used to allocate the joint cost between products. A percent of the total sales dollars is multiplied by the joint cost to get the amount that is allocated to each product. This method is used when all joint products are sold at split off. The third method is called the net realizable value method. Net realizable value is equal to the sales price at split off less the cost per unit to sell products. The net realizable value is used to allocate the joint cost between products. A percent of the total net realizable value is multiplied by the total joint cost to get the amount that is allocated to each product. This method can only be used when all products can be sold at split off without further processing. The fourth method is called the approximate net realizable value method. Approximate net realizable value is equal to the final sales price less the cost per unit to sell products less further processing cost. The approximate net realizable value is used to allocate the joint cost between products. A percent of the total approximate net realizable value is multiplied by the total joint cost to get the amount that is allocated to this product. This method 
is used when all products must be further processed before they are sold to customers. Recording joint costs requires three journal entries. The first journal entry moves all product costs into work in process joint products. Work in process joint products is a temporary holding account. The cost in work in process joint products will be allocated and moved to individual product work in process accounts. An allocation method is chosen and the amounts that are allocated to each product are recorded to each individual product's work in process account. Amounts are also recorded to a work in process account for byproducts if the company always sells the byproducts. Products are items consistently sold to regular end user customers. Byproducts are consistently sold to another company to be used as a direct material. Accounting for the byproduct will be discussed later in this video. The product costs incurred to further process each product are recorded to each product's individual work in process account. The total cost of each product consists of the allocated joint cost and further processing cost. Each product has its own WIP account. The total cost divided by the quantity of products made gives the cost for one unit. The total cost of completed products are transferred to finished goods. The cost of finished goods are moved to cost of goods sold when products are sold to customers. Now let's talk about what is done when a company has byproducts from the joint process. The net realizable value of byproducts is subtracted from the total joint cost before allocating to other products. The first step is to compute the net realizable value of the byproduct. The cost to sell and the further processing cost are both subtracted from the sales value. The second step is to subtract the net realizable value of the byproduct from the total joint cost to get the amount of joint cost that will be allocated to the regular products. The allocation is computed and the entry to move costs from the work in process joint products account to the other products and the byproduct is made. There are three methods of accounting for byproducts. The net realizable value indirect method is used when byproducts are stored in the warehouse before they are sold. The net realizable value direct method is used when the sale occurs the same day and no inventory is stored. The realized value method is used when byproducts are not typically further processed or sold. For all methods of accounting for byproducts, the first entry that must be made is to move the net realizable value from the WIP joint cost into the WIP for the byproduct. This is generally done when joint costs are allocated as previously discussed. If this was not done, previously, the net realizable value must be recorded to WIP now and cost of goods sold is decreased. Most textbooks and the problems on the website will record the entry as if it was not done in the allocation process, which is the second method here. Further processing costs incurred are added to the work in process account for the amount of the cost. When the byproducts are ready to sell, they are moved from work in process to the finished goods account. When the product is sold, the company receives cash and reduces the finished goods inventory account for the sales price. The net result of all four journal entries is that cost of goods sold is lower by the net amount received or the net realizable value of the byproduct. The net realizable value direct method is very similar to the indirect method. Further processing costs are recorded to work in process, but no entry is made to move costs from work in process to finished goods because the goods are expected to be sold the same day and no finished goods inventory account is necessary. The company sells the product and the inventory account is removed. The realized value method is used when byproducts are not typically sold and the company disposes of the excess. 
The other revenue account is used because this is not a part of the normal day-to-day -day operation. No inventory account is used because the company does not store the byproducts. The net of other revenue is the impact on income. Some companies use cost of goods sold instead of other revenue if they have byproducts that they sometimes sell. After viewing this video, you should be able to define the terms associated with joint cost and allocate joint costs to individual products. You should also be able to record the cost to make products using a joint production process and record costs associated with byproducts. Please log on to studymyaccounting.com and use the practices you learn for examples of each of the concepts discussed in this video. Then work the practice test to verify your understanding. Write out the answers and then check your answers to the answers and explanations provided. Please go ahead and write them out. It will help it stick. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.